Earlier today, the New York Mets finished their series against the Tampa Bay Rays, but they went into their second game looking like absolute duds. Hall of Famer Justin Verlander gave up six runs at his Mets debut, dropping the Mets to 20 and 23, an astonishing 6 and 16 over their last 22 games. Fans are both ruthless and they do want some change, and the Mets have called up their top prospects in Brett Beatty and Francisco Alvarez, but to no avail. The Mets pitching recently has been notorious for giving up runs in the first inning, and it's been so consistent that if the players were running a two-minute marathon, they would have fallen flat at the 10-minute mark every single time. And last time was no different, as yet again the Rays took a 2-0 lead in the top of the 7th, and the Mets were yet again looking hopeless. But the Mets had called up one of their top prospects in Mark Vientos, so they were hopeful to get some sort of spark in that department. And Vientos came through, he had a 2-1 home run, and of course Tampa had to go back in front on the top of the 8th inning, and they added another run in the top of the ninth inning, and they were up 5-2 in the bottom of the ninth inning. And with the three kids coming up in Brett Beatty, Mark Vientos, and Francisco Alvarez, you would hope that the Mets had a bit of a chance. And down to the last out, with a 5-2 game and two outs, the game came down to Francisco Alvarez, 21 years old. The top prospect in the MLB, Francisco Alvarez has more power in his arms than the power in Tomas Nero's repaired eyes. Alvarez took a hanging curveball and hit it off the second deck, and there it was, baby. Hope. Hope that Mets fans have for the future in these young players and Brett Beatty, Francisco Alvarez, Mark Vientos, and Ronnie Mauricio waiting in the wings. However, David Robertson came up in the top of the inning to pitch. He had been great this year so far, but he wasn't perfect. He gave up two runs in the top of the 10th inning, and then with the extra inning runner on the bottom of the 10th inning, Jeff McNeil led off the bottom of the 10th inning with a single, putting runners on the corners with one out. $341 million later, Francisco Lindor struck out on a pitch in the dirt, and the Mets were unfortunately a double play away from losing this game, despite the numerous effort of comebacks. Pete Alonso grabbed an into a double play in the first inning, but two pitches later, I was greeted with the best notification an MLB fan could ask for, a walk-off three-run home run. I was actually in Target with my friends when this happened, and this ironically happened at the same time the Yankees gave up a 3-1 home run to lose the game. Must be tough being in the AL East. I also forgot to mention the Mets have designated Walker Daniel Vogelback, who doesn't really provide much out of absorbing the playing time from the young players. I understand walking doesn't make an out and it expands the lineup, but you have to do more than providing walking to the batter's box at the start of your at-bat. Despite these issues, the Mets were able to win that game 8-7, and they were able to win today's game by a 5-3 final. Colin McGill pitched 6 innings, and the Mets were able to go above 500 as Pete Alonso homered again, and the Mets got great work out of the bullpen. This weekend, they're facing the Cleveland Guardians, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm actually going to the game tomorrow night, so I can't wait to get to my first game in person. It's going to be a blast, and hopefully we can get our season back on track, one game at a time. Take care.